too much because I have the incomparable uh, uh, Donna with me at the moment, Donna Jackson. Donna, just before the break, you said something which I find rather fascinating. You're not too keen on the environmental crisis agenda. Tell me about it in your own words and take as long as you like. <laughs> Okay, listen to me. The environmental crisis agenda is a government growing agenda so that they can micromanage the lives of individuals in their home, including every room in the house. It's the biggest hope and it's also the biggest grift so that you can extract more taxes from individuals and actually lower the standard of living so that you can shorten the lifespan of most human beings. They have this EV agenda. Amazing. You hear a lot about the uh, America and how we're racist and systematically racist and how this wealth gap exists. But they want to take away, take, they want to price African-Americans and minorities out of the private car market so that they take away their ability to have a car. Their own Federal Reserve, the Federal Reserve of Philadelphia put out a study that says you can actually decrease the wealth gap if you give minorities a car because they have more access to better paying jobs. They have more access to more markets like the gig market. They can have two or three incomes so that they can make up the difference in income. And so what does the federal government do? What does the Biden administration do? <laughs> create an agenda where you create cars that are unaffordable to minorities so they don't have a car. They've incentivized manufacturers not to make gas-powered engines and make them unaffordable so that people can't have access to a car. So what do you do? You increase the wealth gap even bigger than it is. So now when they're talking about systematic racism, it's not about if I, you call me a name, if you don't like me personally, it's about if I feel financially secure and everything they're doing with this EV agenda is to make sure that people don't feel financially secure because they don't have access to jobs that are not located in their community. The best ones are usually 30, 40 minutes away outside of the community. You hear about all the crime. It's all interrelated. You hear about the crime. The crime leads to businesses shutting down in the community. So what happens? If I live in a community, I don't have enough money to buy a house, I have to drive outside of my community to get a job. They're taking away that ability. And there's some other things that are more bridges, but I'm going to stop for a second. <laughs> I'll come I'll, I'll come back at you and then you can carry on. Um, but you're being unfair, Donna. I see it this way. You can buy a second hand electric vehicle uh, fairly cheaply because they're useless with a range of about 10 miles because the battery's wrecked and useless. And then you park it next to your house. And because the battery is cracked, it'll catch fire and burn your house down. And then you get the insurance and build a bigger house. Wealth generation, Donna. What's not to like? Well, what's not to like is that African Americans have the lowest home ownership rate since uh, before yeah. Jim Crow. Good because point. they don't own their homes, they rent them. Because the median income of an African American is $45,000 a year. That's somebody that's doing well. When you have the average electric vehicle, that's $48,000 a year. Now, add that to the fact that the subprime auto loan industry is actually at its highest default rate in 30 years, which most African-Americans have to take uh, a part of because they have lower credit scores. So everything they're doing right now is predatory. The thought 90% of electric vehicles are part of a two car household. One third of households can only afford one car and for African-Americans, that is the vast majority. So no matter how you slice it, 
it's going to be a bad deal for most minorities. And get this, they talk so much about all of these great programs that they have for African-Americans. You know, we're going to give child care tax credits and, and earn income credits and all of this extra income caveat. Attached to that is an asset limit. So if you partake in any of these programs like welfare, food stamps, uh, housing subsidies, you have an asset limit of $3,000. Now that's not $3,000 in savings, $3,000 in your car, $3,000 in cash on hand. No, total assets, $3,000. Bank accounts, insurance, 401ks, you can only own that much. That means that if you make a automobile $10,000, they still can't own it. The average cost of a car that most minorities own in a it's probably $2,500 or less because they'll get booted off of all of those programs. Not only will they get booted off of those programs, but they'll have to pay the government back. So they have to spend everything that the government gives them and they're not even allowed to own a vehicle that expensive and still participate in these programs. To be honest with you, an electric vehicle, which is worth two and a half grand, would be in such bad condition, it would only be good for storage. You could live in it, but you probably couldn't go anywhere in it because an electric an electric unit for one of these cars is something like about $22,000 just to replace it. You're completely right. The, the after sales value of an electric car is rubbish because a, a secondhand electric car can be rubbish. Uh, and what, what I have to say, I agree with you on here. You've pumped, look, you've, you've stirred me up into an angry mob now, uh, Donna, one man angry mob. But the fact is, I can't believe that the people who are legislating for electric vehicles have the slightest understanding that just because they can afford a Tesla and um, a proper petrol car, uh, everybody else can't or lots of other people can't. And this two car family point, I see this in the UK all the time. So for the little run around virtue signaling going around for the dinner party, you use the electric car. But if you're making a proper journey, you use the petrol one. I guess it must be the same in America and the distance are, are even bigger. It's 100%. And then you add that to the fact that most minorities live in urban communities where they don't have garages. They don't have, they live in multi-generational homes. That means apartment buildings. There are no electric charging stations. I mean, they can't own it, first of all. So it's not even a question. But the second thing is there's nowhere to charge it. They don't own their homes. I mean, it's it's ridiculous to think that a single mother with multiple kids would be able to, and, and, the, and the conversation always switches. They really want us to use public transportation. Because every time the, the whole agenda is built for the fact that they know the average person that owns an electric vehicle in the United States has an income of over $100,000, lives in a wealthier suburban community. So that automatically excludes most minorities. And I think that they do that on purpose because they don't want us to live in their communities. That's the bottom you know line. Well, what they've done in London, the mayor of London at the moment, who's standing for re-election, he actually is presiding over par over policies in London, which massively restrict the number of parking places in the inner city. So if you're out in the leafy suburbs where you've got a big drive and a nice garden, you can put two or three cars on there. One for you, one for your partner, one for the kids, maybe two. But in central London, they have an active policy to stop it. How on earth? Can a mayor who wants to level up uh, wealth uh, and, and, and opportunity think there's any logic in that? Or does he just think there'll be hundreds of, of big fat tables pushed right across the, the pavement, which could be stolen as well or electrocuted in their, their trip hazard, uh, while everybody tries to charge up their cars? And also, I'm not sure about this, Donna, but has anyone in America actually figured out how much extra electricity you would need if you suddenly have like 200 million electric vehicles? And they have it, but I think that's the point because they're they're really their philosophy is not a one for one. I say this all the time. It's a one for none. 
They really want to limit the number of cars that are on the road and people's access to private car ownership. I bring up the point all the time. Before Henry Ford created the Model T, the automobile had been around for 50 years. But what Henry Ford did was remarkable. He made a car that was affordable for the average man. That led way actually built the suburbs. It created the hospitality industry. Um, you think about it, it created a vacation for everyone. 70 to 85 percent of all of the revenues for fast food restaurants in this country is through the drive through window. I mean, this is a a, a, a uh, industry that's going to be wiped out. I mean, there's so many statistics out there that says that if you're a single mother, which the vast majority of African Americans are, you can't get your your kids from one a point A to point B medical uh, appointments, school activities, any of those things without a use of a vehicle, a car. But really what they want to do is push African-Americans and minorities into public transportation. They, you know, they had the Inflation Reduction Act with all of this money set aside for the, uh, these kinds of initiatives. You know that only seven, seven electric charging stations have been built. $60 billion they alloc allocated for it. Seven, seven. seven. Hang on. Seven. You must. You mean seventy thousand or seven hundred thousand? No, I mean, seven electric charging stations have been built, and one of the things I point out. So they, for this Green New Deal and environmental justice that's supposed to help minority communities, sixty billion dollars. I want to give you a, a, a scenario of what sixty billion dollars is. That's actually. The market capitalization of four motor company that employs more than 200,000 people worldwide and supports millions of small businesses. In the United States, you may, have, may or may not have heard about the Tulsa riots, Black Wall Street riots, that, that this very affluent Black community where people were upper middle class. You could build over 2,000, over 2,000. Black Wall Street in today's inflated value with that $60 billion, and we wouldn't even be talking about poverty today. But what is it going to go to? It's gone so far, seven electric charging stations. Most of that money is a green slush fund for all of the political friends to keep people in power and to make sure that there's an automatic barrier for people in the lower rung trying to get into the middle class and it's being used to force people in the middle class into poverty because they created an impossible scenario. Affordability. Henry Ford made the car affordable, which built the suburbs, the middle class, hospitality, countless industries. They're creating an electric vehicle to do the exact same opposite, to make it unaffordable. So you can decimate all of these areas. And when you think about people that have lower college graduation rates, they largely work in the hospitality industry, which they want to destroy. So this either way you look at it, they want to take away jobs from people. They want to take away freedom because automobiles equals freedom for individuals. They want to make sure they destroy people's longevity. Uh, are you saying that that's a conscious plan? Because that's quite a big statement that they deliberately want to do it. Or is it just sheer incompetence on Capitol Hill? Oh, listen to me. I say this every time. I don't believe for a second that people don't realize that that's the, that's the consequence of what they're doing. I mean, if you're sitting down there and you know that a electric vehicle's car payments is $1,000 and you are living we got to yep we're going to come and every, 
We've you're, you're Every- seeing this coming in and out. We'll come back to you in just a minute. Uh, with just a slight problem with the signal there. I just before we go to the break, we're going. Don't worry, folks. Don't go anywhere. We're going to come back to Donna Jackson. She's on a roll. <laughs> I really want to hear what she's going to say. Uh, so we'll just sort out her her uh, signal 